Hi, my name's Vicki Baer. I work with Intermountain Healthcare, and I'm here to educate you on a quality improvement project that we conducted in our level three newborn intensive care units, looking at recombinant tissue plasminogen activator to restore catheter patency. We looked at efficacy and did a safety analysis. Tissue plasminogen activator, or TPA, is an enzyme on the surface of vascular endothelial cells that converts plasminogen to plasmin and facilitates the lysis of developing fibrin clots. In 2001, the FDA approved recombinant TPA to reestablish patency of central catheters occluded by a fibrin clot. Most of the reports in the literature are on adults and cite rare instances of sepsis and hemorrhage associated with recombinant TPA. However, there are very few reports in neonates. We looked at the efficacy of giving recombinant TPA to clear central lines in our level three newborn intensive care units. The dosages, we looked from January of 2001 through December of 2015. Usage varied quite a bit with more usage taking place in the last five years than in the previous 10 years since the drug has been approved for use. Usage also varied across our newborn intensive care units with the lower users having only 20 doses given over the 15 year period and the higher users having up to 150 doses given over the 15 year period. We found that 78% of the doses were given to clear central venous catheters with a lower percentage in arterial and chest tubes. We found that 108 of 187 catheters were cleared on the first administration of recombinant TPA, that being about 58%. Of that 58%, 72% of those catheters went on to maintain patency until they were no longer needed. 16 out of the 108, or 15% of those catheters, reoccluded in approximately five to nine days. And uh, of those, eight catheters, 50% were had patency restored after a second dose of recombinant TPA. This slide demonstrates the successful line clearances uh, broken down according to line, arterial, chest tube, and venous, clustered in three-year segments over the 15-year period. There was no difference in gender or race associated. However, the lines that did clear successfully, recombinant TPA was administered earlier postnatally than were those that were not successful at 10 days versus 14 days. We looked at the adverse effects associated that had been reported in the adult cases and we found in our neonatal cases no new cases of sepsis. We found one new case of new bleeding in a 24-week gestation, three-day-old neonate weighing 660 grams. This baby would have been very susceptible to bleeding just by virtue of its gestational age and weight. Interventricular baby developed an interventricular grade four on the left and grade three on the right, following three doses of Alteplase in a six-hour period. One for an occluded PIC line, one for an occluded umbilical venous catheter, and one for an occluded chest tube. After looking at the benefits and the risks, it seemed that it was highly favorable to use recombinant TPA to restore patency in occluded central venous catheters. Greater than 50% of the recombinant TPA administrations resulted in restoration of line function. Almost three-fourths of the salvage lines remained functional until they were no longer needed. Only one case of hemorrhagic potentiality attributed to recombinant TPA administration occurred in a very susceptible neonate when three doses were given in six hours, not recommended. Due to the favorable results of this quality improvement project, we developed a system-wide consistent approach for the use of Alteplase in restoring patency in catheters. For information regarding those consistent approaches, feel free to email either Danielle Scott or myself for details of that consistent approach. Thank you.